Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. We are doing a bunch of different things in today's video. I am making a crock pot chicken fajita meal. We are organizing a little bit, some of Sydney's books, some of my pantry items, and just decluttering and getting a little bit more organized. I have partnered with Cricut in today's video to share with you how I labeled some of my pantry items and just made them look a little more aesthetic. I will be showing you that in a little bit. But I wanted to start off, I filmed this video over the course of a couple of different days and I wanted to declutter this little Lazy Susan corner cupboard that I have done like twice since I've lived in my house six years. It's ridiculous. So I ended up just taking everything out, decluttering it, gutting it out, throwing away everything that was expired or bad and not in use and then i of course was going to clean you know like sanitize and clean the uh shelves here because like i said it doesn't get done as often as it should that's for sure and sydney of course wanted to take her little animals for a spin If you guys have a cabinet like this, how do you organize it? Do you just put everything in there like by themselves, which is what I do and did? Or do you have like baskets or organizers? I've seen some on Amazon and I have had them in my save for later for like a month now. Um, but I just don't know how functional they will be because they're essentially like corner bins. So you'd have to slide them out to get the products. I don't know. I'm just trying to think ahead. Do I even need them? Is that a waste of money? Um, if you have them in your home, let a girl know. So I do have a small closet pantry and I have a mix of different containers. These ones are just, I believe the um, like OXO brand and I've gotten them from Target. Um, and I do have glass ones from Target with like the wooden lids that are a little bit more, I don't know, aesthetic, <laughs> aesthetic, I like those. But I do have a mix and I was just popping in. Apparently I had two things of brown sugar open and I was just putting that in one of the airtight containers. I have heard of the trick of putting, I, I think it's like a slice of bread or a piece of bread in there so that it stays soft. These keep them pretty soft. Um, I, they, I haven't had any issues with them, but let me know in the comments too if you use the bread trick and if it actually works. I don't know. So it kind of weirds me out. I don't know why, <laughs> but it just does. Now I'm going to go ahead and prep our crockpot chicken fajitas using these crockpot liners from Aldi and first time ever using crockpot liners and I'm stoked to not have to wash them. I'm starting out with a half a can of diced tomatoes with green chili at the bottom of the crockpot, slicing up whatever veggies you want to use. So I'm using, um, we had red, pe red peppers and yellow onion on hand. So I'm going to go ahead and slice up my veggies and get half of those put on top of those canned tomatoes. We can pretend that we feel nothing and keep it hidden now. Cause I've been thinking about crossing the line and just giving. Can I feel it the way I do? Uh -huh. Cause I've been thinking about you all the time, thinking it out. I wanna make it with you. This time. 
On top of the vegetables, I topped it with a little bit of fresh minced garlic. We have our chicken tenders. I was just doing four, a uh, good portion for Sydney and I. It was actually a little bit much. And then seasoning it with salt, pepper, chili powder. So you can use as much or as little as you like, depending on if you like a little bit of heat. Um, and then I have smoked paprika, a little bit of cumin and oregano for seasonings. And then I went ahead and topped it with the rest of the canned tomatoes, canned tomatoes. <laughs> I couldn't get my words out there. Um, and then cook this on low for about five ish hours. You can do it on high for like three hours or so. So next I decided to label some of the pantry jars and containers that I had and I've been dying to get these looking cute and labeled permanently and taking off the paper ones that I had made a long time ago. <laughs> um, so I am partnering with Cricut on today's video to share with you how I've done this. Now I have the Cricut Joy, which is a beautiful little machine that you can take with you everywhere you go. It's so convenient and easy to use. You can just plug it in, download the Cricut app and you have customizable projects from t-shirts to labels like I'm doing here and it uses all kinds of different smart materials. I am using these smart vinyl permanent to make these labels right now and so I just went into the app and picked whatever font that I wanted. There's so many different fonts to choose from and I typed out sugar because I was labeling my pantry items. And then it's so simple to use, you guys. If I can use it, you can use it. Trust me, I am not good with technology. I know I mentioned it the last time I used this Cricut machine and it is just a breeze to use. Very easy and very customizable. So I was printing out this sugar label and then uh, with just a couple of clicks it and loaded my um, materials, it went ahead and cut it for me. And then what I did was take the backing off and use the clear transfer tape, which is a godsend. It is it has a grid on it, so you know it's nice and level and straight and you don't have to think about it. So you go ahead and stick the clear transfer tape on your letters and it the letters come right off, stick to the clear transfer tape, and then the sticky part of the letters, this is a lot of words, I understand, but it makes sense, I promise. The sticky part of the letters is going to um, stick right to the item that you want it to, and then the transfer tape just comes right off, leaving the letters behind perfectly symmetrical and straight and I just love the way that these came out. I went ahead and labeled a few of them. My cocoa powder, my chia seeds, my sugar, and can't wait to get all of the all of my pantry looking nice and uniform. And of course, I have a link in my description box below if you guys are interested in getting yourself a Cricut machine. The Cricut Joy is just the best in my opinion, you can bring it with you everywhere you go and so easy to set up and use. So highly recommend. Again, link is going to be in the description box below. This day that I was filming this, I was all over the place and doing the most of random things, but Sydney's room's kind of been driving me nuts and I will tackle it eventually, but she has stacks and piles of books everywhere. And then a lot of times, you know, she'll just go upstairs and, 
you know, read books or like look at the pictures of books and they just kind of have started cluttering everywhere up here. So I went ahead and got a large basket from her closet and I decided to put all of her books in here. And instead of laying them flat and stacking them on top of each other that way, if you stand them up, they hold a lot more. It's very efficient way of storing books and you can cram in so many versus just stacking them on top of each other. And then of course, once I got all the books in the basket nice and lined up, I don't know what I was trying to do by size there. It's never going to stay that way. Sydney wanted to read. Um, and so I moved the basket back for her so she could read books. She loves to look at all the pictures and whatnot. Her little clothing rack here is a mess. Like I said, I, I'm going to tackle her room at some point very soon here. Um, but we also have like a weird, we're in a weird mix of weather. Some days are warm, some days they are really chilly. So we have every piece of clothing that Sydney has like out and available. So I need to take care of them, um, and go through what fits and what is weather appropriate. So I'm just stripping her bed. I need to, to wash her sheets and her, uh, pillowcase and taking that down and doing a load of laundry. It's all right now, but I don't know if I can take another go round. Hey, now you know you have to decide, and you gotta tell me what's on your mind. Wait a while, you gotta take a deep breath. I can make you smile. feel like I am finally making some progress with all the laundry I had piled up on me throughout the summer. Uh, folding another load here, but we are rounding down, you know, not, not piled over anymore, which is just feeling so good. Instead of dreading the laundry folding, I'm just doing it and sucking it up. <laughs> then I went ahead and checked on our chicken fajitas in the crock pot. At this point, they'd been cooking for about four hours and everything was nice and cooked through. The veggies were tender. The chicken was falling apart. Now, if you're finding that um, you have a huge volume in there, like lots of, you know, tomatoes and large chicken breasts you might need more time so just uh, double check that of course but your chicken should be able to fall apart and shred really easily there's going to be a lot of liquid in there for fajitas. You can either just strain this out when you're um, like spooning them onto your fajitas or you can take a ladle, which is kind of what I did. And I just spooned out a little bit of the liquid, which is mostly like tomato juice and a little bit of, you know, all the juices from the vegetables. So I just spooned that out to make it a little less wet. Next, I popped in some ready rice, some brown rice in the microwave, just like 90 second uh, rice to make my life easy. And while that was in the microwave, I was making a list of what I was going to pack Sydney for lunch and what she was going to have for breakfast in the morning. I am not a morning person and I am very new to this school 
uh, need to be out the door very early routine. So I'm trying to make my life as easy as possible. And I just wanted to brainstorm what she was going to have for lunch. So I don't have to think about it or worry about it in the morning. And I asked her what she wanted as well. So that's what I did while the rice was cooking. And lastly, all you have to do is assemble the fajitas. I just end up using flour tortillas. Whatever you like is fine. I put some of that brown rice on the bottom of them. I top it with all of the veggies and the shredded chicken with that little bit of spices and juice from the fajitas. And I also top it with a little bit of shredded cheese. Again, I am trying to be a little bit more healthy. So I'm using less than I typically would because girl likes cheese. <laughs> I did top them with a little bit of sour cream as well, just a little bit, and then a squeeze of lime for a little bit of tang. I love squeezing lime on all of my tacos and fajitas, etc. So, oh, also I did add some avocado as well. I hope you guys got some motivation in today's video and like this peek into one of those rainy days in our lives where we're kind of like, I'm tasking out just things to do around the house and get done. So I hope you guys enjoyed it again and I will talk to you in the next one.